You'd need good eyes to see that, Jane. Pour it into a jar and seal it. Jane, come and dance the shadish with me. I don't want to appear polite, but I have promised this dance to Kristen. <laughs> well, she can have another. Can't you, Kristen? You'll lend me Jean, won't you? That's hardly up to me. If your ladyship condescends, it's hardly for him to refuse. <laughs> to be frank, and without wishing to offend, I wonder if it would be wise to dance twice running with the same partner, especially since these people aren't slow to jump to any conclusions. What conclusions? What do you mean? <coughs> since you choose not to understand, I'll speak more plainly. It doesn't look right to prefer one retainer over others awaiting the same unusual honor. Prefer? What an idea. I'm astonished. I, the lady of the house, honor this dance of yours with my presence. And now, when I really feel like dancing, well, I want someone who knows how to lead and who won't make me look ridiculous. As your lady should command, I'm at your service. Don't take it as a command. This evening we are all just enjoying ourselves together. And any rank is laid aside. So, give me your arm. Thank you. Don't worry, Kristen. I shan't steal your sweetheart. <laughs> Oh, yes, do. 
Now is just the time. <laughs> I, I really couldn't. Some other time, perhaps. Another time means never. Is not so dangerous. Dangerous? No, I would just rather not. Look at that. She'll make a delightful wife, won't she? I wonder if she snores. No, she doesn't. She does talk in her sleep, though. How do you know? I've heard her. Won't you sit down? Not in your presence, no. I wouldn't take the liberty. But if I were to order you to? Then I'd obey. Then sit. But wait. Can you get me something to drink first? <coughs> I'm not sure we have in the ice box. Just beer, I think. What do you mean, just? I have simple tastes. I prefer it to wine.
get no peace until I fall. No rest until I fall. And were I to reach the ground, I think I'd want to bury myself in the air.
single tree. But from the window, I could see the wall of the Count's garden, overhung with apple trees. It was the garden of paradise, guarded by angry angels with flaming swords. Still, along with the other boys, I found my way to the tree of life. Now you despise me. No. All boys steal apples. You say that now, but you still despise me. I went into this paradise one day with my mother to weed the onion bed. And there beside the garden path was a Turkish pavilion, overhung with jasmine and covered in honeysuckle. I had no idea what it was for. People used to go in and come out. And one day the door was up the jar. And so I snuck in. The walls were covered with portraits of kings and emperors. The windows had red curtains with little tiny castles on them. Oh. Now you know what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> I had never been inside the Hall Park. I had never been anywhere uh, except in the church. But this was the most beautiful. And no matter where, thought straight, I always came back there, until I was gradually overcome with the desire to enjoy the full delight of the fan. I crept in, saw, and marveled. But then I heard someone coming, and for the gentry there was only one way in or out, but for myself, there was another, and I had to take it. Then I ran through the garden, through the strawberry patches, the raspberry bushes, and down, I got to the rose garden. under the weed. If you can imagine this, under thistles that pricked me, under wet earth that stank. And I thought to myself, it's strange that if a thief can enter heaven and dwell with the angels that a laborer's child here on God's earth cannot enter the hall park and play with the Count's daughter. Hmm. And do you suppose all poor children feel the way you did that day? If all poor children Of course they do. Hmm. It must be a tremendous misfortune to be poor. Oh, Miss Julie, yes. A dog may lie on a countess's sofa. A horse may have its nose stroked by a young lady's hand, but a common drudge. All right, every now and then a man has what it takes to pull himself up out of it, but how long often is that? You know what I did then? I ran down, fully clothed in the mill stream. That dragged out and given a thrashing. But the next Sunday, when Father and all the others were home, my grandmother, I made certain I was left behind. And I gave myself a bath and soaked in warm water. But on my best clothes, I came to church to see you. And when I had seen you, I went home, determined to die. But I wanted to die beautifully, pleasantly, without pain. I remember it was dangerous to sleep under an elder bush. We had one just then in season, so I stripped it of everything I had had and made up a bed for myself in the oak bin. Have you ever noticed how smooth oats are to the touch? Like human skin. Well, I lay down, shut the lid, closed my eyes, and went to sleep. And when they woke me, I was really very sick. But as you see, I didn't die. I don't know what I was after, but I had no hope of winning you, of course. You were just a symbol of how hopeless it was to ever escape the class into which I was born. You're a charming storyteller, you know. Have you been to school? A bit. And I've read lots of novels, been to the theater, and I've heard posh people talk. <laughs> That's what taught me most. Do you listen to what we say? And I've heard quite a bit, too. Sitting in the coachman's box, rowing the boat. I once heard you and one of your young lady friends. Indeed. What did you hear? Oh, it really would be nice to repeat. And I must say, I was surprised. I couldn't imagine where you learned all those words. I guess at bottom, there isn't such a difference as I say there is between people and well, people. Shame on you. We don't behave like you when we're engaged. Really? No good playing innocent with me, you know. 
That man, he was a swine, and I loved him. That's what you always say afterwards. Always? Always, yes, I say so. I've heard the expression several times on similar occasions. What occasions? Like the one in question. The last time. Be quiet. I don't wish to hear anymore. She didn't wish to either. Strange. Well, in that case, have I your permission to go to bed? To bed? On Midsummer Night? Yes, dancing up there with that rewind doesn't exactly amuse me. Then, get the key to the boat and row me out onto the lake. I wish to see the sunrise. Is that wise? You sound as though you're worried about your reputation. Why shouldn't I be? I don't wish to become a laughing stock or be dismissed without a reference. I don't know how that beginning to get on in the world. And have a certain duty to Kristen, I think. Oh, so it's Kristen now. Yes, but it's you too. Take my advice. <laughs> Go up to bed. Me? Take your advice? Yes, just this once. Miss Julie, it's late. You're tired. And we're drunk and hot-headed. If my ears don't deceive me, they're coming here to look for me. And if they find us together, you're lost. I love these people as they love me. Let them come, you'll see. They don't love you, Miss Julie. Believe me, they eat your food and spit at it. Just listen to what they're singing up there. Just listen to them. No, don't. What are they singing? It's an obscene song about you and me. <laughs> How horrible! How two-faced! Surround for you. They're all cowards. You can't fight them. Run away. Run away? Run to where? We can't get out or, or into Kristen. My room then? <coughs> Necessity knows no rules. You can trust me. I'm your true, loyal, and respectful friend. But suppose, suppose they come in to look for you in there. I, I can bolt the door. If they try to break in, I'll shoot. Come on.
but you will sit in the office like a queen, setting your slaves in motion at the push of a bell, and the guests will file past your throne, leave their tribute on your table. You have no idea how people tremble when I handed a bill. I'll solve them all right, and you'll sugar them with your sweetest smile. Oh, let's get away from here at once. By the next train, we could be at Malmo by 6:30 to tomorrow morning. Uh, Frankfurt at 8:40 the next. Uh, Hamburg to Basel takes a day. Como by the Goddard Pass. Three days. Three days. Gee, this is all very well. But you must give me courage. Tell me that you love me. Come and take me in your arms. Again, not in this house. I do love you. You don't doubt that, do you, Miss Julie? Miss, call me Julie. There are no barriers between us now. Call me Julie. There are barriers between us as long as we remain here. There's the past, there's his lordship. I've never met anyone I respect as much as him, but I've only seen his gloves lying on a chair, and I feel so small. I hear that bell there ring, and I start like a frightened horse. Seeing his boots standing there, so tall and white. It sends shivers down my spine. Superstitions, prejudices pinned into us from childhood. They can easily be forgotten, too. Some other country, as long as it's a republic. And you'll see. People will bow down to my porter's livery. Bow down! But I shan't. I wasn't one of the bound straight. I made a stronger stuff. I've got character. You'll see. Just let me get hold of that first branch, and you'll soon see me climb. I may be a servant today, but a year from now, I'll have a place of my own. In ten years, I'll be a landed gentleman. Then, I'll go to Romania and get myself a decoration. Then, I might, just might, mind you, end up a count. That's very well, James. In Romania, you can buy a title. So you would be a countess after all. You would be my countess. Do I care about all of that? what I'm leaving behind. But Jean, tell me that you love me. Otherwise, yes, what am I otherwise? I, I'll tell you a thousand times, but later, and above all, no scenes. We have to approach things calmly, coolly, like sensible people. Now you sit there, I'll sit here, and we'll talk as if nothing has happened. Have you no feelings? Me? Nobody's got more than I have, but I can control mine. A moment ago, you could kiss my shoe! That no. was then. We have other things to worry about now. Don't speak so harshly to me. I'm not. Just sensibly. One phone is enough. Let's not commit any more. The cat will be home at any moment now. We have to have this figure by then. What do you think of my plans for the future? Do you approve? You sound very sensible to me. Jean. A big project like this requires a lot of capital. Have you got any? Me, you bet. I've got my professional expertise, my vast experience, my knowledge of languages. That's capital enough, I'd say. That won't even buy you a rail ticket. That's true. That's why I'm looking for a backer. Someone who will advance me the money. Where will you find one in such a hurry? That's up to you. If you want to be my partner. But I can't. I have nothing myself. Then you can forget the whole thing. And I... Well, things will stay as they are. No. No. I'll stay under this roof as your easy lay. Now with people pointing their fingers at me? That I can look my father full in the face after this? No. Gee. Take me away from here, from the shame and the, dis the dishonor. Oh my God, what have I done? Mm. What have I done? What have you done? That's your tune now, is it? Same as many other before you. And now you despise me. I'm flowing. I'm Fall down to me, I'll lift you up again. What terrible power drew me to you? Was it the lure of the, the weak to the strong? Someone falling to someone rising. Oh, was it love? Was that love? Do you know what love is? Me? You bet I do. You think that was my first time? <laughs> awful. You saying you think awful. 
awful, awful things. That's what I've learned. That's how I am. Now stop being hysterical. And stop acting the lady. We're birds of a feather now. <coughs> there, my girl. Come here. Come sit down. I'll give you a glass of something special. Besides, when I serve at a house, I consider 
consider myself part of the family. Like one of the children, and no one calls it stealing when one of them picks you up buried up a heavily laden bush. Miss Julie, you're a fine woman. You're quite too good for the likes of me. You are the victim of an intoxication, and you want to cover it up by pretending that you love me. You don't. Part perhaps from falling for my looks. In which case, your love's no better than mine. But I could never be content being your creature. I could never earn your love. Are you so sure? You'd like to think there's a chance that I could love you? Without a doubt. You're beautiful. You're refined, educated, charming when you want to be. <laughs>
stables all burnt down in very peculiar circumstances gave rise to arson. You see, the accident happened the day after our quarterly insurance expired. The premiums which Father had sent, well, they were delayed <laughs> due to the negligence of the bearer. <laughs> Don't drink anymore. <coughs> what does it matter now? We were left penniless and had to sleep in the carriages. Father couldn't find the money to rebuild the house for he had to neglect all of his old friends. Then mother advised him to ask one of her old friends, a brick merchant who lived nearby. Father borrowed the money, but wasn't allowed to pay interest, which surprised him. And so, our house was rebuilt. Jean, do you know who burned the house down? Your mother. Do you know who the brick merchant was? Your mother's lover. Do you know whose money it was? My mother. No, I don't. My mother's. Well, so it was accounts too, unless it was a settlement. <laughs> no, there was no settlement. Mother had a little capital of her own, which she didn't wish for father to administer. So, she invested it with her friend. Who pinched it. Exactly. He kept it. All this came to my father's notice, but he was unable to open proceedings, repay his wife's lover, or prove that the money was his wife's. <laughs> you know, he was on the verge of shooting himself. <laughs> Some say that he tried, but failed. <laughs> but then he got back on his feet, and Mother was forced to pay for her sins. Can you imagine what those five years were like for me? I loved my father, but sided with my mother because I didn't know the real circumstances. It was she who taught me how to hate men. I'm sure you've heard of she hated men. <laughs> and I swore to her that I would never be a slave to any man. But then you get engaged to that lawyer. <laughs> Just so he'd be my slave. <laughs> you didn't take time to that. He was willing enough. I didn't give him a chance. I tired of him. I saw what happened in the stable. What did you see? Well, I saw how you broke off the engagement. You can still see it there on your cheek. I broke off this engagement. Did he tell you that? Oh, a little swine. Hardly a swine, I imagine. Do you hate men, Miss Julie? Yes. Most of the time. <coughs> then this weakness comes over me and... <laughs> so you hate me too? Oh, more than I can say. I'd like to have you put down like an animal. The offender is sentenced to two years penal servitude, and the animal is killed. Is that right, Miss Julie? No prosecutor here, and no animal.
For no, I consider suicide to be a crime against the creator who gave us life. <laughs> you believe in God. Of course I do. And I go to church every other Sunday. And to be frank, this is getting tiring. And I'm going to go into bed. Oh, I see. And you think I'll rest content with that? Do you know what a man owes a woman he's dishonored? I always like to pay my debts. Do you know what the law says? Unfortunately, the law says nothing about a woman who seduces a man. What else can we do? But leave, get married, and part. And if I refuse to enter this mess alliance? As a lay On my part, yes. I come from much finer line than you. None of my ancestors ever committed arson. How do you know? We can't prove otherwise. We've no family records. Except for the police. And I've read up on your pedigree in the Peerage book. Do you know who your oldest ancestor was? A miller who let the king spend the night with his wife during the Danish War. I've no such pedigree as that. I've no pedigree at all. But I can sire one. This is what I get for opening my heart to a wretch like you! For sacrificing my family's honor. Dishonor. You see, I warned you not to drink. You get fun talking, and one shouldn't talk. How I regret it. How I regret it. Jean. If only you love me. Oh, for the last time, what do you want me to do? Start crying? Jump up your riding whip? Kiss you like you got a leg coma for three weeks, and then? What do you want? I don't understand. Oh. This is getting tiresome! What's happened when you get involved with women? Miss Dooley, I can see you're miserable. I know you're suffering, but I don't understand you. We don't carry on like this. For us, love is a game. When work allows, we don't have all day and all night for it like you do. I believe that you're ill. Your mother was certainly crazy. The whole parish has gone mad with pietism, but this is a kind of pietism run wild. Be kindly to me, Jean. Treat me like a human being. Then act like one. You spit all over me and won't even let me wipe it off on you. But help me. What am I to do? Where am I to go? Hell, if only I knew. I've been mad. I've been crazy. But does that mean there's no way out? Stay here and say nothing. Nobody knows. Impossible. Servants know. And Kristen. Not for certain. Again. That's true. The consequences. The consequences. All right, listen to me. You must leave at once. The no, law will be anywhere. I can't. I can't go alone. You must listen to me. The can be at any moment. We know. We know what will happen once you've aired the harms already done. And so you go on and on and get bolder until you get found out. You must. You must go alone, then. Write to the Count and tell him everything, except that it was me. <laughs> I think that he'd want to know, and it would be too keen to find out. So listen! Go. Come with me. Come with me. Are you me. mad, woman? Miss Julie ran away with the servants. The next day after tomorrow will be in all the papers. The Count would never survive that. I can't think on my own anymore. I can't. I can't act. You've got to tell me what to do. Now you see what a fat creature you are. Why do you puff yourselves up, stick your nose in the air, act as if you're the lords of creation? <laughs> All right, you want your orders? Listen to me. <coughs> Go upstairs, get changed, get money for the journey, and come back down. Come with me. Come with me upstairs. Now you're being <coughs> done again. No. Go. At once. <laughs> Speak kindly to me, Jean. An order always sounds unkind. Now you know. <laughs>
You think you're gonna take a bird with us? Oh, I'll be damned. It's only my assistant. I can't leave her. Oh, it makes me... Put the bird back. My... Don't make a fuss. No. My one memory from home. The only living creature that loves me now that Diana's betrayed me. Miss Julie, put the bird back. I can't leave her. Keep your voice down. No. Just over here. I won't leave her in anyone else's hands. I'd rather you, you killed her. Even here, I'll soon ring his neck. Oh, my little Serene. Are you going to die yet? And leave your mistress behind? Don't make a scene. This is your good no, and happiness no, we're looking out for. No. You should have learned how to slide a chicken instead of pistol shooting. <laughs>
just had an idea. What if the three of us went abroad to Switzerland together and started a hotel? Jean and I could run everything, and you, you could be in charge of the kitchen. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, do say yes. Mm -hmm. you, you've never been abroad, Christian. You should get away and see the world. You, you never traveled by train, new countries all the time, new people. We'll pass through Hamburg and see the zoo, and, and then we'll, we'll go to the theater and hear the opera, and then we'll go to Munich. You've heard of Munich, haven't you? With, with the great painters, with, with Rubens and Raphael, and, and, and they have where, where King Ludwig used to live, you know, the mad one? <laughs> we'll, we'll go see his castles, and from there it's not far to Switzerland, and the Alps, Kristen. Just fancy the Alps with, with snow in the middle of the summer, and, and laurel trees and oranges that grow all year long. And, and that's where we're going to stay over this hotel. I'll sit in the office. Uh, I'll write letters and go shopping. Oh, what a life it'll be. Christian trains whistling, buses arriving, bells ringing on every floor and in the restaurant. And, and, and I'll take care of the bills. I can, I can solve them. Just you wait and see. You have no idea how timid tourists are when it comes to paying the bill. And, and, and you, you'll, you'll appear like a, a queen before the guests. You'll be nicely and neatly dressed, you know, and with your looks. I'm not flattering you, Kristen, with your looks. You know, one day, you'll get a hold of a husband, a rich Englishman, you know, they're so easy to catch. <laughs> that's where we'll, that's where we'll get rich and, and we'll start the hotel on Lake Como, a, a villa, a villa, and there's sun there, and it's dark sometimes, but it's mostly sunny because the sun shines there too sometimes, or we can come back. We can come back here, here or somewhere else, somewhere else, and here. Do say yes, Kristen, please say yes. <laughs> Miss Julie, do you really believe all this? Believe it? Yes. No. I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Thank <laughs> you. 
purse may also receive the gift of grace. Tell me, even if you don't believe it, you can't. Wait. Miss Julie, now I know you. No hunger among the first. Among the last. I'm among the last. It's horrible, but there's no other way. <laughs> 